Well, I've just got back from Spain and uh, personally I had, a, I had a great World Championships for the Masters, the first ever one, Masters World Championships. It was a great event, 12 teams entered for the first time and, uh, and it's just going to get stronger and stronger and stronger. And uh, we had a great set of lives, it was a fantastic week. It was uh, uh, an education being with him, we, had a, we all got on and everything like that. And uh, team come forth and uh, we just missed out and probably a little, li little bit of lack of experience and the fact that we didn't find the, the, the method while the last date changed every day. But in the end, I, got, I came second individual and on the first day I caught 446 fish and on the second day I caught 450 fish. So basically that's a lot of fish in five hours fishing. In other words, it was like one and one and a half a minute. And I've been asked loads and loads of times, how the hell do you catch 450 f fish in five hours? Well, it wasn't feeder fishing as we know it. It wasn't feeder fishing really. It was speed fishing with a feeder. And so what I'm going to do, I'm going to show you, because I've been asked, I'm going to show you the tactics and how we caught them. And a lot of it was... Like I said, it wasn't feeder fishing. A lot of bites we never saw that the fish were on, but there was an art in it. There's always an art to catching fish, and there was even an art to catch between 300 fish and 450 fish, and that's what you needed to do. And uh, so it was as simple as this. When we started off in the week, the fish were out, and all these little crassios, which is what the water were like, they averaged about 47, 48 grams, which is not even two ounce. And they were all over the place, topping. And on the third day of training, we caught them at six metres. And we were learning to catch them at six metres. And on the last day, on the Friday before, they were all here, they were all close. So, how did I catch all them 450 fish? So, this is my little setup. And all we had basically, we had Bloodworm Joker, we had all the, all the baits, all the feeders, all the, we got everything, and that's all that I needed that were there. This is not the identical ground bait we used, but the ground bait we used was Census Lake, Census Geoli, and lads riddled it and got all the big bits out so it made a nice cloud. And it were a really nice cloud, so when it hit the water, it were coming off as it were going off the feeder as it were falling through. And basically, uh, you could put Joker in that if you wanted or you didn't. It, I don't think it made any difference whatsoever. And the only thing we used were a few maggots for the hook. You'd think we're fishing three and four metres out that we'd use nine and ten foot rods because it's quite close, but it won't right. Eleven foot and twelve foot rods were by far the better. I don't know whether they're a bit more powerful and it were easier to swing all these fish in. I don't know, but it were, it were definitely, I use eleven foot rod. And I use eleven foot rod and we use braid. And we use braid because we could feel the fish bite. So all we've got on is a two metre shock leader. So you've got a little bit of, uh, a little bit of give in it and it, it just worked right. I don't know, it wasn't quite right using braid direct to the hook. It wasn't, it was almost too violent if that makes sense. And you need a little bit of a cushion. So we had two, two metre shock leaders. Then all we did, we had a little feeder and we, international rules between the feeder and the hook, it's got to be a minimum, minimum 50 centimetres. So all I did, I just had a running feeder. Your feeders have got to be running all the time. It runs onto the bead and the feeder. Now the feeder were really important. Anybody that knows me knows I love plastic feeders, solid plastic feeders. And normally I'd use that little small round there, but I didn't, I used that one. It's a small round with its weight forward and uh, and it's and it's got the mesh on and it's got the mesh on because I wanted it to come out as it was going through the water it was far superior on the first day I used a 15 gram but it were better using a 20 and on the second day I changed that to a 20 gram it was just a little bit more solid like it hit the bottom differently and it were it were a little bit more positive so a 21 gram that just run onto a onto a little bead like that the hook length now this is going to surprise you I'm sure the hook was a size 12. Now these fish were two ounces, but a 12, I just used a special feeder from a Guru one, size 12. The hook length, 018. It made no difference, but the hook size did. We had 14, you bumped an odd fish, and an odd fish come, 
come off when, you, when you're swinging it in. And all we did basically then, I got the hook and I got a maggot. And all I did, you thread it on. And you just put it between the two eyes and you press the hook in and you just turn it on like that so it's actually threaded towards the point. Now that was really important because you never missed a bite. It's that that makes them rattle on the, on, on the rod end. Now you think we might change that pretty regular. You caught as many fish as you could on that and it was really important that and the best bait, the best bait, and I didn't work it out well the second day, were a bit of skin. It were miles better. A bit of skin. I wish I'd have realised that first day because I think I'd, it would have missed section. And sometimes you think, that's not right. It's horrible. A bit of skin, it's just horrible. But it were perfect. And I wish now I'd have actually busted it because you got a bite quicker on a skin than you did a fresh maggot. I don't know why or whether, whether it were lighter and it fell slower, I'm not quite sure. So that's my setup. A simple, it's a simple little setup. But it wasn't that that caught the fish. This was the idea. Now you can see from state to me reel, I haven't cleaned anything. That's all ground bait and everything like that. And it's a right mess. And, and I had to clean it both uh, after the first day and I, I just haven't left it since. But because I'm only fishing two, three, four metres, right, you've still got to perform a cast. In international rules, you've still got to take the bail arm off and perform a cast. But what was important was is the way that feeder hit the water. I had to give like a little cast and make it hit the water. And the idea now is there's no rod rest, I'm going to hold the rod and everything like that. And all I'm going to do then, I'm going to swing it in, I'm going to get my feeder, and I'm just going to touch it. Now the, fit, the ground bait was a little bit on the soft side, right? So it made a cloud as it went through the water. And then as I let it go, I took the bail arm off like that so I could make a cast. And I just let it go and lifted it up, plop, on the water. It went to the bottom and I'm watching the tip. And then if I got a, a bite instantly like that, and I did lots, you could pick up. And if I didn't get a bite, I'd lift it and put it back down. I'd move, try and move the, yes, I know, I moved the feeder. I know I did, I'm first to admit it. I've never moved it as much in my life. Six inches. And if it didn't work, you just lifted it up like that and most times there'd be one on. And the trouble was, because of the length of the hook length, the 50 centimetres, what were happening is, is they were picking it up just sitting there. So by lifting it, they just lift it like that and it go, and there'd be one on. And you just pick it and swing it in. And then when you swung it in, like that, what I did, I lifted my arm up because I wanted a little bit more length and I catch the fish and there's a reason for this now is look at the feeder, look where the feeder is unhook the fish, keep the rod in an upright position and just look where the feeder is unhook the fish, put it in the net, grab my feeder into the ground bait like that, all in one swoop, let it go plop to the bottom, to the bottom, it's at the bottom I'm looking for any kind of indicator. If it moves, I'll lift it six inches like that. And I want the rod to go like that and rattle. And if it rattled, I just swung the fish in. So lots of time like that. Swing it in like that. And you catch a roach like that sometimes. And then if you look at that now, where the feeder is. The feeders. Now, because I haven't swung it in right, that feeder's too far away. So I've got to learn. I learned that that's what you've got to do. Catch it like that. Catch the fish. Put it in the net, as I put it in the net, look where the feeder is. Straight into, into the thing. Now that doesn't happen if that bow isn't right. And then it's the bow of the length of line is perfect to just do that, let it off to the bottom, like that, look at your tip, you haven't got one, pull it six inches, 10 seconds, that's all it was. 10 seconds, pull it, if it wasn't on, like that's one on, swing it in, like that. Look, look where my arm's going now. Like that, look look at my arm. So look where my feeder is. All and it's and it's all a case. When I said to you, there's an art in it. That was the art. Go like that, in, straight into the fish. Out, bail arm off, plop to the bottom, and that's all that I did. And I never put the rod on the rod rest. I was holding it all the time because I was working it all the time, all the time like that. I'm I'm working the the thing. And there you got a little bite, but then missed it, so I put it back down. So you put it back down like that, and you, and sometimes when you think it's come too close, you go like that, and you have to you have to recast, and you, and you again look at that. That were really important. That length of line is a bit longer 
so so the feeder is hanging over the ground bit so I'm going straight that straight back out plop and it's a routine and you're getting in the routine now I didn't learn all this while second day really and like I said to you we're, we're, we're learning all the time 10 seconds just pull it move it just like that and, and that's what you're trying to do all the time but what you've got to remember is there there was a ball of fish and if you see my YouTube video of 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 that of the ball of fish you can't believe it and these fish were following it down and all the time I'm moving it moving it like that and you won't believe how many times I haven't seen a bite and I've picked up and I've just moved it like that and it's gone drrr, rattle picked it up like that there you go swung it in look where my arm is it's up in the air because I want that line a bit longer so that when I go that it's over my ground bait into that straight in and it's a routine out and that's all I'm trying to do and we were learning this while we were doing the competitions and that's how I caught for up 450 fish each day